Okay, so we have an, another transformation question. This time, it's with exponential function. So I'll go over it a uh, very slow and step-by-step -step process on why the transformation works the way it does with this example. So here it is. f at x equals minus 3, 4 to the power of x plus 1. So the main function here, okay, you have to identify the base parent function. So let's call that uh, p at x for parent function. And that's 4 to the power of x. Okay, so this is going to be a modified version of this function. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. And then to correctly identify the transformation, we have to ask ourselves, okay, there's two things that's happening here, this and this. Now, the modification to this, is that operation of plus one happening, right, before the parent function or after, okay? So to get four to the power of, four to the power of x plus one, right? Do we, should we be adding one to x first and then raising it by power of four? Or should we, right, raise it uh, as an exponent of base four and then add one afterwards? Okay, so let's think about that for a second. So if we get x and ra raise it to the power of four and then add one, do you see how we get this? Okay, but if you add one to x and then you raise it to the um, power for base four, all of it goes on the top. So what's happened with this one is that we actually have to add one before the base parent function, okay? So we can write that as, you know, the input to p, let's let it be, uh, x plus 1, and then we get 4 to the power of x plus 1. So if the transformation is something that we're doing to x before the main parent function, it's horizontal transformation, okay? Because we add it by 1, right, because we add it by 1, to get the same y value as this function, okay, so that function there, when it's 0, it's 1, and when it's 1, it's 4. Okay, so the function looks like this. So when it's one, when you put one in here, the output is four. Because it's plus one, right? Now we have to plug in zero for x, okay? If you plug in zero for x, we get four. So this, instead of happening at one, now we plug in zero, we get here. Instead of zero, I need to plug in, right? Here, if you put zero, you get, right? 4 to the power of 0 is 1, that 1 value. Because of the plus 1, we actually need to plug in negative 1. So at negative 1, right, we get that. Right? Because there's that x plus 1 ex algebra expression, all the x value we need to put in to get the same y value as the parent function needs to be exactly 1 less. That's why it happens in the opposite way for horizontal transformation. Okay, so like that. Of course, it'll approach like that, okay? Okay, and then anything that happens after 4 to the power of x, so this times by negative 3 is a vertical transformation. So you take the original y values, and we're just multiplying it all by negative 3. Okay, so that one, I think most students are not that confused with. So this x plus 1 causes the function the original x, y value in the parent function. This represents the x, y value in the parent function transformed so that because it's plus one, we have to put in values that are one less. And because of this negative three, we have to multiply the original, this y value, uh, times it by negative three, okay? So for example, um, this value of four needs to be negative 12, right? So our final function, Okay, so let's see here, we grab uh, 0, 1 will become uh, negative 1, okay, negative 1, and negative 3, right? So we need to go down negative 3, 
one is four, so it's zero, and multiply by negative three is negative 12. Okay, so um, let's see here. Try drawing it here. Okay, negative one, let's say that's negative three, and then a zero, negative 12. Okay, and right. this is still the horizontal asymptote, right? Horizontal asymptote doesn't change. Horizontal asymptote's equation is y equals zero. So if you multiply that zero by negative three, still zero, so it doesn't change, okay? All right, so that's why it's gonna go down like that. And then it's gonna go over. Okay. Every student gets confused. Like 90% of students I teach, uh, they don't really have the clear logic down why uh, everything moves in the opposite direction. And then um, they try to memorize it, they forget, right? And they always mix it up. Like this happens every year to tons and tons of students. Please maybe uh, rewatch what I said about why it shifts in the opposite direction one more time and get the logic down so that you don't have to be confused about this anymore going forward. And this will come up a lot, right? Transformation will literally do in grade 10, 11, 12, if you're doing any math in the higher years, it'll constantly come up, okay? All right, hopefully that helped and I'll see you in the next one.